What's up everybody? I'm Jess and you're watching Keto Rewind. Today's video is the last day of the Keto Rewind Clean 30 Challenge. So two thumbs up, you did it. I am so excited for each and every one of you. I hope, or my personal hopes for this challenge was to teach you as much as I possibly could about how I lost over 130 pounds and what foods I ate also so that I taught you well enough so that you can do it. And the third thing is that I hope that you have gained confidence in your ability to keep fighting for yourself and that, that you've had enough of a difference in your body that you're gonna want to keep this up and you're gonna wanna fight for your health. So if I did my job, that is what I hope to achieve from you guys. So, but I think we all can agree, if you follow the Clean 30 Challenge, you will lose weight, you will change, and you will feel better. <laughs> so, a quick little surprise, and then we're gonna get to the full day of eating. If you like to see weight loss inspiration, if you wanna see motivational <laughs> type videos, don't forget, hit that subscribe button, turn on those notifications so you don't miss any videos. And now, with that said, let's jump into today's video. Okay, so first things first, let's start off with some really cool news. Let me grab it. I, it's official folks, I have a silver play button. I've gotten the award from YouTube. Uh, you earn this once you get over 100,000 subscribers on YouTube. And I, I, it's, when I started this channel, I was, my goal was like 100 subscribers. <laughs> Never in a million years would I think I'd be standing here today with a silver play button from YouTube. So I will give myself a quick, that's a kid in the back. So I'm gonna give myself a little pat in the back. Um, this is symbolic to me because I want to help empower and to teach as many people as possible how to change their life. To know that there's better things beyond eating yourself to death every day or eating your emotions. You know, it's about getting back and living life. And this was kind of like my little thank you. <laughs> you know, like I did it. I reached that many people or my message touched that many people to want to change their life. <laughs> Jeez. What do you think? Is it pretty cool? Yeah. <laughs> so I'm going to try and probably put that on my wall behind me and maybe make a little bit of a formal background for you to look at. So anyways, I... <laughs> Someone's excited for me. So anyways, I it came last night. Yeah, it came last night really. So thank you for subscribing. Thank you for being a part of my journey and cheers to the future. I will be starting my weekly weigh-ins again and you also every Monday you're going to get more info on the Keto Rewind toolbox. We'll go through a chunk of it. There's like four sections. We're going to go through a chunk of it each week and then by the end of the month you will have everything you need in your toolbox. But each week is a lot of homework on figuring out what you want to put in your box. Because if you want this to work, you have to take it seriously. And you've got to actually take that time and think and, and daydream and brainstorm and really get to the root of what's driving you to be, to, what's driving you to eat. So I just wanted to say real quick before we go into today's full day of eating, thank you every single one of you who have been, have reached out to me, have commented, have liked my videos, have shared my videos, have taken my challenges and what I have to say seriously and I appreciate each and every one of you. So thank you, I love you, and let's get into the full day of eating next. Okay, so lunch is a sausage link with some mustard and three scrambled eggs. Meanwhile, there's somebody in the kitchen that likes to help us. What you doing, Cinderella? Hi, pretty girl. She's She just turned 10 months old. Okay, so as we said earlier, we're going to have a pork tenderloin with a marinade. The marinade is good anywhere from three to four hours to overnight, and it just takes uh, the layers on so many wonderful flavors onto the pork tenderloin, and it's a new way to, co to cook a relatively inexpensive cut of meat. So the first thing you do is uh, most of the pork tenderloins come by the two. There's usually two of them side by side, uh, about this wide. This, this adds up to just under three pounds. So what you wanna do to prepare the meat to accept the marinade is you wanna cut it, um, first you clean off and get whatever you don't want that's on there. There's a lot of silver skin sometimes that you wanna take off. But basically you want a good chunk of meat here. So take it, 
and let it sit there and this now this is going to feed six of it in in theory this would feed six to eight people um, the next thing that we're going to do is make the marinade but I need to wash my hands first okay so now we're going to make the marinade let me tell you a little bit about the marinade it is not my recipe it comes from a very dear friend of ours and his name is Ralph and Ralph is a superb cook and I've asked him if I could share this recipe and he was and I said, you know, I said, you may be famous because there's a lot of people that watch this channel. So thank you, Ralph. Be ready for the onslaught. Get your autograph going. You got it. You're going to need practice because you're going to be, this is Ralph's world famous marinade. So the first thing you do, and this is going to, this met recipes for about a two to three pound roast. You're going to have um, a quarter of a cup of olive oil. And since this is an almost three pound roast, I'm gonna put a little bit more of everything because I want to have enough to cover the meat. The next thing, uh, Ralph uses soy sauce. Uh, we pretty much, we don't use that. If anything, we would use the tamari, which is the gluten-free soy sauce, but we really like the coconut aminos. So there's, there's no soy, it's lesser of the evils. Okay. And we are using the four-in-one immersion blender chopper thing I've been using since I got for Christmas. It's a really cool Christmas gadget. It is. And next we're going to use about one clove of mixed garlic. Um, pork and garlic are really nice together, so that's probably a little bit more than a one minced garlic, but it's close enough. We don't count garlic when you're Italian. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> And this, and then the recipe calls for about three tablespoons of Dijon mustard. Again, we're going a little heavy because we have an almost three pound roast. So that's just about right. And then your uh, salt and pepper to taste. All right. And I'm going to do this in the Stick blender. blender. We got laundry washing in the background, so if you <laughs> hear that, that's the noise. All right, that's really nice. You can even taste it, so you're used to. Oh, the taste is wonderful. The next thing I'm going to do is pound the meat. So on top of the counter, I put a slice of yeah, you can um, almost see it. The saran wrap, saran stretch, wrap. Stretch, stretch or cling wrap, whatever you call it. And I'm going to take a piece of the meat and I'm going to make get another. Yeah, if you would, thank you. And cover. Just keeps the splash zone. It's not for really like it's it's, it's just, easy. Yeah. It's easy clean up, you know, using plain clean countertop. But it's this really is purpose is just to keep the splash. And you want it good and thin, okay? Now doesn't that make a nice little pork steak? Is that beautiful? Or and being what? that pork has a le is a leaner cut, this particular cut is a leaner cut of meat. You're getting a more tender piece with a leaner cut of meat without having to put the fat in it. Correct. And again, and let me remind you, it starts off like this, and then when you slice it, you now, it will be pounded on this side, and that gives you the steak. Now watch, we'll do that again. You slice it, it comes out like this. You stand, stand that little soldier right up. And repeat until it's all done. All right, so we put all of these basically smashed tenderloin pieces in a Ziploc bag, and we're going to add the marinade right to this. It just makes it easier. You can use a bowl. You don't need to use a bag, but it's just easier for us to use it this way. All right. And see, now you have a clean counter, too. So <laughs> I'm all about that. 
It's more about the splash, though, because then you yeah, have to clean, like, the whole kitchen. Mess. It really is <laughs> Versus such just a, a little spot in your counter. All right, so I put the pounded meat, oh, and it's very, very tender, I might add. I put the pounded meat inside the Ziploc bag because that makes my life easy. And we just give it a little massage. So I pounded my meat, and now I'm massaging my meat. <laughs> That's what she said. <laughs> <laughs> And then a couple of times through the day, because we're not going to cook this till this evening. So a couple of times through, through the day, we, we all do this in, this in the family. If we see something marinating, we walk by the fridge, we shake it up again, because we know that's what we do. <laughs> so, am I right? Yep. So I don't just put the bag in like that, because you just never know porous plastic leaks. And you never know when that bag is going to leak. So I will take it now at this point, put it in the bag. But when you do, just make... Sure, the Ziploc part is on the top because if it were to open, obviously it would make a mess of your fridge. So no matter how much you marinate it or turn it around during the day, put it always back in the same way with the zipper up. And that's it. We'll talk to you later about it. Alrighty, well it's now dinner time. As you can see, it's dark out. Well, I guess you can't because <laughs> the kids it's dark out. It is dark out. It is currently seven o'clock. It's late. We've been playing but softball. It's Saturday. We've been playing softball with the girls, so I've been yeah. running around. Um, we live on the weekends. Yes, we have fun. Oh, we live for weekends. Yes. Yeah. So that's why I'm very happy. It's the last day of filming. Yay! So, but anyways. I, it's I, bittersweet. It's bittersweet. It, it is. is. I do enjoy it. I but know. I need a break. I do too. <laughs> so I don't want to wear makeup every day. No, I do. <laughs> So anyways, we are at dinner time and we are going to make some cauliflower mm -hmm. mashed potatoes. So this being that cauliflower to go with, to go with the pork that's been marinating. The pork that's been marinating. Mashed cauliflower is so easy oh. to do. So don't and it tastes forget. better. Better. Do you not agree? That I it do. It's better? more flavorful. If I had a choice side by side, I would take a potatoes mashed or Cauliflower mashed, it would be mashed cauliflower, <laughs> hands down. Don't you think? Would you yeah. do that too? I think it, I think it does hands require down. a little, the way we cook it though. Oh, it's real fabulous. simple and it's flavorful. So I've taken two heads, of, two meat, two small yeah. heads of cauliflower florets, and all we're gonna do, put it on the stove top and steam them. Um, and then we're gonna, when we come back, we're gonna use a mixture of chicken broth, heavy cream, butter, and a little garlic, salt, and pepper. And take no cream cheese? No cream cheese. Okay, post no. 30. No that cream cheese. Be a, a dollop of cream cheese in there. These taste well, That's what like, I do. You like mine. <laughs> I do, but you like mine too. <laughs> Oh, I want to sit with this woman and all her cheese and extras. <laughs> extras. <laughs> so, but anyways, we're going to let that tender, uh, ten get all nice and soft and tender, and then we'll be back with the next step. But, and we're also going to preheat the grill. Okay, so we're going to put a solid three tablespoons of oil, I'm sorry, of butter in a pan. Now that the cauliflower has vacated the building. Throw that in there. Salt, pepper, garlic. Salt, pepper, garlic to taste, that is. And then two extra ingredients. A splash of chicken stock. That just makes it so you don't have to use quite so much heavy cream and then a solid probably three tablespoons of heavy cream and then all we do is take our emulsion blender the same blend the, the same stick blender that has been doing just about all my recipes <laughs> Now at this point, we're just going to do a quick little taste test for salt. And it's perfect. So now we're going to just set this aside with the cover on it and wait till the pork tenderloin's done. 
So we just moved over the uh, pork tenderloins from the hot side to the cold side so we can have some indirect heat. Alright. And they are sitting uh, about 160 right now. So, what, done? another 10 degrees or so for pork? And there's the mashed cauliflower. I'm just waiting for everything else to be done. And also, one quick thing we did just for a little extra two cans of green beans. That's it, nothing on them, just plain green beans. <laughs> All right, and the pork is off. Doesn't that look so tasty? So now I'm just going to assemble. Ooh, we're getting some steam. Now I'm just gonna assemble my plate. All right, and there we have it. We have the pork, we have the mashed cauliflower, and we have a serving of green beans. And that is it, everybody. Congrats.